up and check out a little more AK and Gamma. And I know you love my music, but right about now, you're checking out your music, My World. Ciao. <laughs> How are you? Hey, I'm good. Are you? I'm good. So your new album is titled P.S. I Love Me. What made you come up for that? Well, this whole moment that I'm um, moving forward with, with my um, reemergence back into the music industry, it's just all about empowerment for women and anybody that's like, you know, continuous fan as well as the new people that are, you know, just coming to me. It's basically about empowerment, and it all starts with me. Okay. So your new single, I Love Me, features Tweet. What was it like working with Tweet on this song? I've been working with Tweet, I would say, for like the past... Well, I've been in the industry professionally as a little more the artist for 10 years. So I started out actually working with her under the Missy Elliott umbrella. So, like, I've known her for years. And I was just like, yo, I've always wanted to, you know, actually record a song with her, but it had to be the right feel. And I was just like, yo, what us be are both two strong, like, sisters coming back to the music industry. Why not do a great record that people can feel? Because she has a soulful, melodic voice. And everybody know I'm sure she's hip-hop and R&B. So I was just like, yo, let's do it. And, like, literally... I sent her the record because I was in Baltimore. She was in Atlanta. I sent her the record. She did her part, sent it back, and like the rest is history. That's when great minds think alike and really you know great work ethic as well as being a great singer. You don't have to be all in people's face in the same session to actually get your point across. She, when she did her part and sent it back, I actually went in and redid mine. I said, oh, now I got to step my game up with mine. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a great song on my end. I've been a fan of both of y'all for like a while, so like to hear y'all collaborate on a song together, I was just excited. Thank you, thank you. So, what can fans expect to be different from your P- um your mixtape P.S. I Love You and your album I Love Me? <clears throat> well, P.S. I Love You was just like a just a little sample to put out there to show the fans that I ain't missing a beat. I ain't you know, lost my touch, I'm not washed up, like I can still jack people's beats and still probably slay them on their own record. And it was also just to show that I still, even though I'm involved as an artist and I've matured, you know, as a, as a person, you know, all around, I just want to basically get something out there to hold you guys over until P.S. I Love Me, which is basically more of me and no cussing. <laughs> I went in on PS I Love Me. I was just like, yo, this is a frustrating part, just like doing a record and just being in the studio, freestyling the whole thing, like not writing anything down. With the album, I had more time to do it. With the mixtape, we did it in three days. Okay. So we know that you have Tweet on the album. What other guest features are you going to have on this album? PS I Love Me um, has... Norma Richard uh, of Dirty Money. We have PJ Morton. He is on tour with Maroon 5. We call him like the sixth Maroon. So he's a real good friend of mine. He's also Bishop Forrest Morton's son. So I grabbed all my church people how the world works. I got Fat Man Scoop for the street single. Plus I have another surprise I'm about to drop on uh, the following Monday, which we consider Monday. So I have Fat Man Scoop on a party record. I have... Come on, clap on me. I believe that's about it. I really kept the features on. I have made up. He and I did a record called Take Me Away. I really kept the features at a minimal because I didn't want to come back with a lot of features and then try to get them to perform the records for me and be available. You know, a lot a lot is going on in the industry, and I want to make sure that you really grasp on, you know, the 40-year hiatus and who I really am. I don't want anyone to think that, oh, all I can do is put out songs with everybody else. That's never been my, you know, my whole thing, so... I called a few of my friends, and we made it do what it do. It wasn't no body acting extra or anything. Like, literally, I was sending them the record, and I got it back, like, ASAP. So that was another reason why I chose who I chose. I didn't have to go through 40 million people. I just did direct phone calls. No middlemen. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> so who did you work with on this album as far as songwriters and producers? Um, it was a, I did everything from here on out. 
like from concept to delivery as well as the mixing that was done in house. Um, my new crew, which is we're a family based and family owned and operated business, Sunny Shine Entertainment Inc. I have my own producers and they're the B Boys. So like we concepted the whole album, we did all the records in house. I didn't call any other producers because a lot of people I know me I ain't trying to be fun. They just be acting extra. Nobody had time for that. Like I just set a goal. I said this is what I want to do, and because. I'm a musician. I don't, like, literally play piano, but I know what I want to hear. And that's how I've always basically have been able to maintain, I would say, as far as uh, music, because I know what I want to hear, and I always get producers that can bring out my sound. I didn't want to, oh, let me call this person, because they got the hottest record on the radio, and then it be sounding like a mess. Mm -hmm. So we kept everything in house. Okay, okay. So what type of music can fans expect on this new album? Would it be straight R&B, or would you add some type of new sounds to it? <clears throat> I would say it's, um, it is R&B, um, hip-hop, and gospel. My whole sound is, like, it's a church person. There's not many people who can sing at church and slay everybody in the fair and then be able to get up there and sing Superman or be able to do a show with Jay-Z, 50 Cent, and tour with them as well. So I was like, uh, Missy Elliott and Ja Rule, and then be able to go sing with John P. Key, the Clark Sisters, Celebration of the Gospel, Bobby Jones. So with me being able to do that, like I would say, I just have my own sound. It's really we to put it in a genre. It's just straight classic little. So you have your own radio show. How did you get started yeah. into radio? Well, I've been in radio. Professionally, nine years. When I had my um, first daughter, that's when I did it. Honestly, as well, I'm pregnant. I don't feel like singing. I just wanted to talk. And I got my first show in Baltimore, which is entitled The Little Most Show, and I just stuck with that. Um, as of now, it's on hiatus. I'll do radio, like, probably in the next couple of months and bring my show back on the air. But when you're, like, pushing an album and a single, there's a lot of political things and red tape that you just don't really feel like being extra about, like you want your song played on every station and you just don't want to have to deal with not being able to get spins or why the station ain't playing this just like, you know, because they don't want to play it, maybe you might have a number one show on the competition station. So so I don't have to compete with myself. I took a high end. So we'll be back on the airways very soon because one thing about me is I can talk and I've heard it. Um, for some odd reason, people just love my communication because I always have a number one show. The Little One Show has never failed to you know, reach audiences that I was supposed to cater to the person who was least expected to, you know, like me, and I want people's heart. I just keep it so real. They just have no choice but to listen. So do you think being on radio helped you connect with your fans again? Yeah, definitely this go-around. The first time I was already out as an artist, and then I basically, like, the industry was wide open. But this time around, because I think every five to seven years, the industry shifts. It, like, it just seems like the sound of music changed. Like, you know, first we had, like, the old school hip hop, and then we had, like, the Jay Z's emerge, and then you had 50 Cent, and now you have, like, the Soldier Boys and stuff like that. So when you have that much of a drastic change in the music, you have to see, like, what do the young kids want to hear, but what the, what the old people want to purchase. So you just have to balance them all out, and then you have to find a sound that just feels good. So I noticed that with uh, my sound, I would say like the song Forever. So anytime you hear that, it just makes you feel good. Young kids like it because it has like a snap and beat, but the bro boys like it because you can sing it at a wedding, and you can, you know, dance it at a barbecue. You just have to make music that makes you feel good, and then you just want to keep current sounds. A lot of people say, oh, I hope she don't use no auto so I'm like, but for real, though, all to the way a lot of people use it, they're actually using it wrong. So there's really nothing wrong with it as long as you do it right. So it's just the need to clean the vocal because sounds change. Nobody wants to use old, like nobody uses real to real or ATS anymore. So now that everything is basically digital and you can literally record videos and your album on the same uh, like camera, laptop, computer, everything is so technologically, you know, compatible, it's like, yo, you have to keep with the sound of music or else you'll be lost and no one will care. And then you'll wonder why nobody's buying your album or downloading or following you on Twitter. <laughs>